Okay, in this video, we are going to talk about the magic of a relatively new function that Excel has rolled out called XLOOKUP. This really is a magical function for those of you who have spent any time in Excel using other reference functions. So what I want to do here is very quickly teach you the sort of 80-20 on XLOOKUP. How do you use it and what problems does it solve? So here we have a tabular, sort of a, a list of, of employees for a company. They, you've got their hire date, you've got the department that they were hired into, the office that they're located in, and their compensation. Right? You have it listed by last name. We'll talk about the first name in a second, but right now we're gonna keep it simple. You've got a table list with a last name all the way to compensation. Now, you want to figure out what the compensation is for a specific employee. You want Excel to spit that out. You may also want to find out what department they're in or whatever, but really once you know how to do one, you know how to do the rest. So. The VLOOK, the old way, if you were to grab, try to sort of figure out formulaically what is the compensation of employee whose last name is Bates, you would go in here and you might do something like a VLOOKUP. This is the easiest, most intuitive way for folks that have used Excel in the past to sort of figure this out. So you say, so Excel wants a lookup value. In this case, I've got the employee. I'm going to provide, by the way, the worksheet here in, in the link below the video. So you can download that and play with it yourself. VLOOKUP, this is the initial lookup value, then you have to define the array, and in this case, the, um, the table array is simply the entire table here. And then Excel wants you to define in the VLOOKUP function, again, this is the old way, the old, as you'll see, not great way, is you have to sort of realize, okay, well, compensation is one, two, three, four, five columns to the right. So I'm gonna hard code a five in here, and I'm going to then uh, close this off that I want an exact uh, match, right? I want an exact match, or I might not even sort of specify it at all, and and I, I get my value, right? So you can actually leave that blank in, in this particular case, and you just get your exact Bates. You got 164, no problem, right? So if that that's sort of where typical data analysis began and ends, you know, there's no problem. But what's wrong with the old way? Any of you who have used VLOOKUP would probably be able to right away point out that VLOOKUP breaks if you add a column to the left of last name. What if this table didn't, for example, um, start with last name, but rather started with the first name? Well, if I change this to really start here with the first name, the whole, the whole thing is over. I, I cannot do this because by definition, the VLOOKUP function says, well, I need to figure out, I need to find the, I, I need to sort of figure out where Bates is in the first column. It is hardwired into the formula that the first column in a VLOOKUP is what you need to do, what you need to sort of identify to figure out how many columns to go across. So it doesn't matter that I would change this to six. It's done. There is no baits in the first column and the whole thing is over. I would, I now, the only option is I can only use the VLOOKUP without additional modification if the thing that I'm looking for is in the very leftmost column, okay? Of course, you could do it, you just need additional modifications, which is what we're about to get to in a second. So out of the box, this would not work. You cannot look for things that are, you cannot look for the employee's first um, last name, for example, if the table starts with the first name. So that's the first problem, right? So that's the first problem, I'm gonna bring this back. What else? So another problem, and a major problem, is this is a very brittle type of formula. Imagine, for example, if I decided to add a column in here. Well, if I added a column in here because I want to see, for example, um, what is the employee's you know, bonus this year or, what, or whatever the case, or direct report. Whatever the case may be, this breaks. Why does it break? Because this number, this column index number is hardwired. I, in order for me to fix this, I have to make this dynamic. Again, between those two issues, you, we have identified the, some of the biggest problems with the old way of trying to identify data that's organized in lists, which it commonly is. And so now that we understand the problem, let's look at this amazing solution that should be earth shatteringly exciting for Excel geeks around the world. So Excel Lookup simply solves this by decoupling the initial sort of array from the uh, return array. So it says, okay, well, if you wanna find Bates, all you have to provide for me is the lookup array where Bates is sitting, right? The array where Bates is, and then identify the a second array where the thing that you're trying to get is sitting, all right? And once you do that, 
Now, there's a couple of other arguments here, which we'll leave for um, for another discussion, except for maybe the last, uh, these next two, there's actually a couple. So let me just point out that there's one that says, okay, if you don't find it, right, if, you know, if rather than building an if statement around anything, it's it's giving me so, similar to sort of the if error function, if it says, you know, not found, right? If I don't, if I don't find anything for, um, for this, you can say not found, but you know, maybe maybe this is a little beyond what we happen to need at the moment. And by default, it assumes an exact match. So I'm just going to leave that off. We'll save that for, for a more complicated, um, a more advanced video. And so basically, I've been able to get this really intuitively, really simply. I don't have to count any columns or anything like that. And understand that now, if I add a column, this thing breaks, this thing does not. If I modify the the array where this starts, if I want to add a first name, it makes no difference because I'm no longer defining this entire array where the first column is required is a requirement for it to be this in this last name, right? So I've solved the problem. Now, you, you the, any any of you who, who, who are watching and have used Excel probably remember a time where they've seen or had to use an offset match. Well, an offset match function is really the most common solution or index match is the most common solution to the brittleness that existed before XLOOKUP look was created. So just to as a, as a, a, a clear explanation of what XLOOKUP solves and simplifies is prior to this, when you can't use VLOOKUP because of the issues that exist, you would have needed to do something like this. You would give, well, let's do offset because we wrote offset. You got offset, it says, give me a reference point in this case, it's going to be right above compensation. It's going to make things easier for us because I want to spit out compensation and output a result that is X rows below compensation. Well, in this case, I'm looking for um, Bates, which I know is one, two, three, four below. So how do I solve this? Right? I had the VLOOKUP, but we know the VLOOKUP is problematic. So instead, what you do is you create a match function and the match function says, well, give me a lookup value. The lookup value in this case is Bates in a lookup array, and you define the array. Again, the, the, the thing you're doing here is actually very similar to what XLOOKUP is solving. It's decoupling the, the return array from the original array. And I've gotten the lookup array, the exact match type you have to define here is exact. The XLOOKUP by default assumes it's exact if you don't type anything in, and it needs an exact match here to, re to return something. And the answer here, so now I've defined, okay, well, Bates is one, two, three, four, um, four rows out. So this is how many, or four rows down. So it'll return one, two, three, four from the original point. There are no columns that it needs to go across, which is the sort of the next argument in an index match. Again, this is not an index match video, but that's basically how it works. And you get the same result, but this is a lot harder. This will not break just like the X lookup, no matter what you do, but obviously a lot more work, right? I'm gonna leave this video, um, I'm gonna leave this file for you, hope you enjoyed it. The bottom line is XLOOKUP is way easier and hopefully this is a clear explanation of the, again, the 80-20. 80% of the time you're gonna be using this baseline functionality to solve a ton of problems that used to be addressed with complicated index match and offset match problems. Hope you enjoyed the video, see you in the next one.